Kyle from Nice Guys Garage with a maintenance minute. We're going to flush a heater core today. Pay attention. All right, get rid of this little plastic cover on your car. Just throw it anywhere. And then scoot into the engine base. You can gander. There's our heater hoses. One and two. to go all the way to the storage lot to get this car that was on a trailer. Back her on up. Look, Blue's here. Good dog. I use my mirrors to back up. How do you do it? Seems to work out okay for me. Anyway, here's the tools you need. This is a special little nozzle that connects to hoses. Hook it up to your garden hose. Get a five gallon bucket, some pliers, some gloves, extra tubing helps. We didn't need it on this project. Funnel, some water, any flavor of flush that you prefer. This stuff works okay. Then some new coolant and some more water and you're gonna need some time. Oh yeah, newspaper and a drain pan. This gets messy. Spread your newspaper all around and then get your drain pan somewhere close. Good little view of our heater hoses there. This is your pressure line, the one that shoots the coolant to the heater core and then the other one's the return line. How do I know? We'll talk about it. Once you get the little clip off these, I hate doing this with pliers. What a pain in the butt. God, those clips suck. Yep, yeah. There we go. Now you can pull your hose off. Come on. There it is. See? Pressure was in that line. That's why I know it's a pressure line. And the other one here is a return line. Got a little cooling out of that, but not much. So you still don't believe that that's the pressure line? Well, I'll go start her up for you. There you go. Now you believe me, don't you? I made a big mess. Grab your empty jug, cram her down into the empty space you have back there. So you can put that end of the pressure line into the jug. Because we're going to back flush this where we put the push the coolant through the return line. That's the return line. There's your pressure line. We like to back flush for a specific reason. Plug your hose in there and just give her a squirt. Most of the contaminants are gonna be on the pressure side. So by back flushing, you're gonna force them back out into the bottle. If you flush the other way, you could force all those contaminants deeper into the heater core and ain't nobody got time for that. And then, Empty your jug periodically because, well, otherwise it gets messier. And scoot her back in there. You're going to want to do this a couple of times and then you're going to get ready for the flush. All right. Blow into this tube here. Yep, you can use compressed air, but you could just blow into it like I did here. That empties out your heater core so you can get your flush in there. Your flush should have some sort of directions on there telling you how to mix it up. That's in Spanish. I can't read that. Oh well, not too scientific. I figure a quarter gallon of water, quarter jug of flush. That math seemed to, seems to work out okay for me. I don't know. What do you guys do? Cap on there and just shake it up. Do the truffle shuffle. There it is. Put your funnel into that return hose and grab your flush and just start pouring her on in there until it comes out of that pressure line. Remember, you should have that tucked into a jug. All right, we only used an eighth of a gallon. Is that big enough? I don't know. Wait 10 to 15 minutes. Then back to the garden hose. Into that return line, squeeze on her. And see what happens. 
All right. Pour it out. These clamps, get rid of them, they suck. Use the new clamps from any kit you can buy. Much easier to make your life better in the future. All right, cram that bottle back in there. This is just tedious work. Pressure line goes in there. And then blow through the tube again. Clear out anything left. Seems like we were good, so. I'm okay with this color, how about you? I think we did it. The flush seems like it worked. So, let's put her all back together. Use that new clamp you got. Really should have sized this before I tried cramming her on here. This is what I mean. Size it to the hose so it doesn't slide around so much before you cram it onto the hose you're reconnecting. That way when you get her into position, you can just get your ratchet on it and finish up. Clean out your funnel, put it into your coolant reservoir and then refill. Follow your manual for how to fill this. And then top her off with some water if you're using concentrate. I like to buy the concentrate, it's cheaper. All right. That looks okay. A little bit high, but it'll suck down. Give her a few of the beans while you're in there to get that coolant to suck down. Mine did, that's good. And then check for leaks. I don't see any leaks. No leaks there. None under there. That's a good sign. Hmm. And that level looks like it's perfect. All right, double check my coolant temperature. Give her some more of the beans. Really build that line pressure. If it's gonna leak, you're gonna wanna know. Cleaned out this bucket, look what I got. That all came from our heater core. That was clogged. And yeah, we made a pretty big mess. Good thing I wore my safety sandals. Throw some oil dry down. A couple of handfuls, maybe more. Then scrub it into the ground with a piece of wood, your shoe, anything really. Sweep it into a pile. Vacuum it up. You don't want to let this stuff sit on the ground, it can be dangerous. And then, spray with brake clean. That gets rid of all the coolant residue and the dogs can come back out here. Alright, time for a test. Switch on the heat. Use my temperature gun. Nice and toasty. 130 degrees, that's pretty good. Anything above 115 is considered acceptable. All right, switch over to cold. Let's see if we still got AC. Yeah. I might not use that setting. It's kind of cheating, isn't it? All right. It's down to around 40, low 40s. That's good. Double check the leaks again. Go for the road test. I'm gonna drive her around, give her some beans, and see if she's gonna leak or overheat. This also helps push air bubbles out of the system. Make sure you go somewhere you can get her up to speed. Then, after you park, check for leaks one more time. I don't see any leaks down there. Oh yeah, don't forget to install that cover. Or skip it, who cares. Check underneath for leaks. No, don't see any. Hashtag winning. Thanks for watching guys and gals. Now you know how to flush a heater core. Comment below if you want to see more of these maintenance minutes. See you next time.